Late one evening in early May of 2013, a young man sat hunched over his computer at his desk inside his small bedroom. His workspace was illuminated by the computer screen and a single lamp on his desk. Other than that, the entire room was dark. As he sat there, image after image of young, red-headed high school girls who attended the same school he did, popped up on his computer screen, and as they did, he quickly scribbled their names into a notebook. With each name he added, his evil smile grew bigger and bigger. His plans were beginning to take shape, and he was excited for what was soon to come. Seventeen-year-old Georgia Williams had just started her new job at the local gas station where she met Jamie Reynolds, who was five years older than her. Georgia was the type of person who made friends easily, and this remained true with all of her new co-workers. But Jamie was different. After a couple of days working at the gas station, Georgia realized that this Jamie guy was, for the most part, a social outcast. He was very awkward and shy, and because of this, he ended up being left out of almost everything. Georgia, seeing this, wasn't the type of person to just leave someone out just because they were different. And so, she took it upon herself to get to know him. And very quickly, Jamie and Georgia became friends. It didn't take long, though, for Jamie to begin to develop feelings for Georgia, and eventually he told her about how much he liked her, even asking her out on dates a few times. Jamie really wanted to start dating Georgia. He even went so far as to try to kiss her, but she pulled away from him before he could. Georgia did not want to hurt Jamie's feelings, but the fact was she was not attracted to him in that way. So, as nicely as she could, and being very considerate of his feelings, she turned him down in the most polite way she could think of, explaining to him that she wasn't looking for a boyfriend, and even if she was, she did not want to ruin their friendship. Of course, Jamie was disappointed by this, but he seemed to understand what she was saying, and so he respected her wishes and just dropped the subject altogether. As time went on, Jamie began to really dislike working at the gas station, and he confided these feelings in Georgia, telling her how he wanted something more. He wanted to be a photographer, but didn't know how to get started. He had a camera, and he knew how to take pictures, but he needed a portfolio in order to gain some credibility for his work. And as he was telling Georgia all of this, he suddenly had an idea. And then he turned to Georgia and asked her if she would allow him to do a photo shoot with her. Georgia was a little bit surprised by this, but when Jamie seen that she might turn down the request, he quickly added that he was going to ask more people to be there. And then that way, he could take their photos as well. Jamie adding these details seemed to make all the difference for Georgia, and he could see that Georgia began to warm up to the idea. After quickly checking with her parents to see if it was okay with them, she agreed to the photo shoot. Her parents knew that Jamie was their daughter's co-worker and that he only lived a short distance away. It was only like a five-minute walk from their house to his house. And so on Sunday, May 26th of 2013, Georgia got her outfit together and got dressed for the big photo shoot. Jamie had given her some clothing that he wanted her to model for the photos, and so once she was dressed, she said goodbye to her parents, and as she walked out the door at 7.30 p.m., she received a text message from Jamie that said, I'm so excited. Please don't be late. Nobody had any hesitation in saying that Jamie Reynolds was without a doubt a serial killer in the making. Jamie had a dangerous obsession with sexual violence against women that should have been dealt with long before the photo shoot with Georgia. Because in 2008, when he was 17 years old, Jamie had actually attacked a 16-year-old redheaded girl. Jamie loved redheads, and Georgia was a redhead. He lured the girl to his home while his parents were away, telling her that he wanted her to pose for photographs for an art project that he was working on. But when the girl refused to go upstairs with him, he attacked her. Luckily, the girl was able to fight him off and escape, and when she did, she went straight to the police. But the police only gave him a final warning and counseling. A final warning is a formal verbal warning given by a police officer to a young person who admits their guilt for the first or second offense. Only two weeks after that incident, 
Jamie's parents showed police and his psychiatrist images that they had found on Jamie's computer. It was clear by looking at these images that he had a disturbing obsession with snuff films, dating all the way back to when he was only 14 years old. But what was most disturbing was that Jamie had a collection of pictures of girls that went to his school. He had taken their photos from Facebook and photoshopped nooses around their necks. And these photos included Georgia Williams. There were also photos of women who were being attacked, but these women who were being attacked had the faces of girls he knew personally pasted on them. And his own face was pasted on the image of the attacker. Unfortunately, authorities did not provide a warning to any of these girls or their families. Instead, the police just told Jamie's parents to restrict his access to these types of websites. Completely devastated, his parents did what they could and put software blocks on all of his computers, but Jamie could easily get past those, and he even went so far as to installing his own routers in the home. That way, he could look up whatever he wanted without anyone ever knowing. These were all things that the police and social workers knew about, yet Jamie was only giving warning after warning. Six different agencies knew about Jamie's dangerous obsession, but nobody stepped in to put a stop to it. At 10.30 p.m. that night, Georgia's parents started to wonder where Georgia was. They thought for sure the photo shoot must be over by now, but their daughter wasn't home yet. So her mom sent her a text that said, hey, where are you? What are you doing? And right away, she received a response that said, I've left with some friends, going to be out for a while. I'll see you later. XXX. The XXX at the end of her text was something Georgia always did, which represented a kiss for each of her mom, her dad, and her older sister. At 6 a.m. the next morning, when Georgia had still not arrived back home, her mother sent her another text, but this time it took about two hours to receive a reply. And that reply said, I stayed at a friend's. I'm fine, but my battery is dying too. Her parents knew she had plans for most of that day, so they didn't think about it too much when they didn't hear from her after that. But by that evening, when phone calls to Georgia's phone went unanswered, her parents really started to worry. They started calling her friends, but nobody seemed to know where she was. Georgia's older sister also texted Jamie to see if she was still there, but he claimed that she left the same day that they had the photo shoot. The next day, so on Tuesday, Georgia's first driving lesson was scheduled for that morning. But when Georgia did not show up for the appointment, they finally knew that something was definitely wrong. And so they called the police. The first thing the police did was a background check of the person she was last seen with, Jamie Reynolds. And after just a quick look at his background, they knew this was not a runaway case. At the very least, this was a kidnapping. 22-year-old Jamie Reynolds had a dark and twisted history. And because of this, and without informing Georgia's parents, the police jumped in their cruisers and rushed to Jamie's house. And when they got there, they didn't waste any time. Smashing down the door to gain entry, they went inside the house. But inside, there was no sign of Georgia or Jamie. As the police looked around trying to find a clue of where Georgia was, they noticed that the van owned by Jamie's parents was missing. And when police searched Jamie's house, they found proof that left absolutely no room for any doubt that Georgia was dead and her death was horrific. Investigators found memory cards from his digital camera that he attempted to wipe clean, but using recovery software, they were able to recover the photos that Jamie believed were deleted forever. There were photos of Georgia when she was alive showing that she had a noose around her neck. And then the next set of photos that followed sadly showed that Georgia had been hung. But that wasn't the end of it. There were also photos showing that Jamie had moved her body from room to room, hanging her in different locations. And then he posed her nude body in a multitude of compromising positions. And after all of this, he proceeded to photograph himself having sexual relations with her deceased body. Jamie had placed a boat oar over two beams in his loft. He then slung the noose over the oar and tied the end of the rope to the banister of the stairs. He then had Georgia stand on a wooden box and put the rope around her neck. And then when he had her trust and she least expected it, he pulled the noose tight and kicked the box out from underneath her, snapping photos the whole time. 
Jamie had planned to murder Georgia from the day she had turned down his advances, playing it off like he was her friend the whole time. Early in the morning on Wednesday, May 29th, the police spotted the missing van parked outside the hotel. This hotel was located near Glasgow, Scotland, which was a five-hour drive away from Jamie's house, and it was there that Jamie was arrested. During the interrogation, Jamie didn't show any emotion whatsoever. He refused to help the police in any way, and despite the photos, he refused to admit he had murdered Georgia. And then he flat out denied that he had any idea of where Georgia could be. Meanwhile, the police continued searching the house, and as they did, they began to retrace his steps from the day he left his house in the van all the way up until the day he was arrested in Glasgow. Security camera footage captured him filling up the van with gas, and then shortly after that, another camera captured him stopping at a theater to watch the movie Fast and Furious 6, which just happened to be a movie that Jamie had asked Georgia to go and see with him. And then after the movie, he drove to a shopping mall where he purchased a new watch. With this footage in hand, the police searched the route Jamie had taken that day for any sign of Georgia, but they didn't find anything. Unwilling to give up though, the police turned to the media, asking the public for any information at all. And luckily, a witness came forward telling the police that they recognized both the van and Jamie, because Jamie's van had gotten stuck in some mud on a country road, and this witness had stopped to help Jamie pull the van out. Just three days after Georgia was reported missing, the witness led the police to the area where Jamie's van had been stuck. And nearby that location, Georgia's body was found, laying nude in the woods. Jamie hadn't even made any attempt to bury her. Immediately after Georgia was recovered, Jamie was charged with murder. After Jamie was charged and police were going through the security footage, they realized that while he was pumping the gas... Georgia's lifeless body was inside the back of the van. She was also in the back of the van when he stopped at the theater to watch the movie. When police completed the investigation of Jamie's house, they found evidence that he had planned the murder down to the very last detail, and he had planned on doing the same thing to several more girls. He even spoke with two other girls that were on his list over the phone during the time he was murdering Georgia. Georgia's family spent the next six months waiting for the trial to start because Jamie wasn't saying anything. But then things took an unexpected turn and to everyone's surprise and relief, just five days before the trial was set to begin, Jamie changed his mind and finally submitted a guilty plea. And so, because of Jamie's clear progression of planning his crimes to attacking women and then murder, it was clear that he had a very high potential to become a serial killer. And so Jamie Reynolds was given a full life sentence, which means that he will never be released. In the United Kingdom, this is a very rare sentence with only about 100 offenders serving it. And Jamie Reynolds is one of the youngest people to receive this sentence. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. It really helps me out, which is always very much appreciated. And I will see you again later.